Eddie was able to absorb all the incredible guitarists that came before him and add his own ideas to his guitar playing, constantly asking the question, what if? What do you get if you mix Mozart and a mad scientist and give him a guitar? Eddie Van Halen, that's who. Eddie is an insanely influential guitarist who pushed beyond what people thought was possible with the instrument. And today, we're gonna to talk about how Eddie Van Halen changed music forever. Hi there, it's Warren Hewitt. Hope you're doing marvelously well. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when we have a new video. Of course, you can go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and get a whole bunch of free goodies. It's easy to say that Eddie Van Halen has been one of the most influential guitarists. His band Van Halen is one of the best-selling groups of all time. Eddie is featured on one of the best-selling albums of all time. In 2012, Guitar World Readers Poll voted him the number one guitarist of all time. But rather than just sit here and name all of the huge amount of awards and accolades he's won, or list out all of the guitarists he's influenced, today we're just going to dive into the specifics of his guitar playing his history, and how he changed music. I'll be joined by my good friend, Mr. Jamie Humphreys, who's going to break down some of Van Halen's guitar parts, showing you directly how Eddie changed music. So to really understand the impact that Eddie Van Halen has had on music, we first need to talk about the musical landscape in 1978. <laughs> In 1978, punk music is exploding in the underground in America. Disco is still alive and well, and well-established rock bands like Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, and Pink Floyd are still touring and putting out huge albums. Slightly newer bands like Kiss and Aerosmith are growing ever more in popularity. The guitar landscape in 1978 is vast. No matter which genre you're in, most popular music is guitar-based. So if you're a kid playing guitar in 1978, you have so many guitar heroes to choose from. And then on February the 10th, 1978, a spaceship lands on this landscape of guitarists. At least that's what it felt like anyway. Van Halen's self-titled debut album is released and changes everything. What's so interesting about this album is it starts with Running With The Devil. It's a great song with an amazing guitar tone, tight harmonies, and some short soloistic spots from Eddie. It's good, but they're just getting started. Then comes the next song, the perfectly titled Eruption. It's a one minute and 42 second cadenza that announces Eddie Van Halen to the world. <laughs> And my hairs are standing on end just thinking about that. When it comes to guitar playing, Eddie Van Halen was truly from another planet. Van Halen is mixing tapping, a whammy bar, incredible tone, all in a way that was so unique that people weren't even sure it was a guitar. I remember the first time I heard it, I didn't know what it was. It just was insane. It sounded so unbelievably amazing. A Zach Wild guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne recalls. It was just beyond mind blowing. I mean, you know, just hearing like going, and especially the tap. I, I go, that, that can't be a guitar. What is that? You know, and then, you know, now you know, and you hear the Phase 90 on it now, and you know, the the effects and the, the, the way and the and, and everything, just the whole nine yards. It was just like beyond mind blowing. There's a scene in the 1985 movie Back to the Future where Marty McFly goes back to 1955 and convinces his dad he's an alien because he wears a hazmat suit and plays Van Halen for him. This is a fun bit for the movie, but it's also a great metaphor for how hearing eruption for the first time felt in 1978. Guitar tapping already existed in a simpler form. Steve Hackett had done it, Alan Holdsworth, and, and lots of other guitar players had experimented with it, but Eddie took it to a new level and brought it into the mainstream. Uh, Led Zeppelin's playing, and, and Jimmy Page is going like this. He's going... Okay, so he's got his hand up in the air, in the air and I'm going... I 
just moved the nut. Okay, this part right here is the nut. But then, I, I, instead of using this hand, I use this hand. It's, it's basically this finger, or these two, or however many you want to use, is just an extension of this hand. Eddie was able to absorb all the incredible guitarists that came before him and add his own ideas to his guitar playing, constantly asking the question, what if? Eddie claimed to have learned almost all of Clapton's solos from the band Cream, note for note. This idea of taking an existing musical star and building on it can clearly be seen in another song from their debut album, I'm the One. It feels like a blue shuffle, but unlike any other that came before it. It's faster than a typical shuffle, and Eddie's guitar playing is so fast, so effortless, and so mind-blowing that it gives new life to the existing genre. For more specifics on Eddie's technique on this first album, I'm going to turn you over to Jamie Humphreys to break down the guitar playing on this song. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the riff from I'm The One. Now this is an up tempo shuffle it's a, a pretty fast shuffle and maintaining the groove is 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 pretty challenging but there's also some interesting open string licks that eddie plays around the pentatonic scale there's a great use of natural harmonics and also one of eddie's signature legato patterns where he keeps the same shape all across the strings let's have a look at the riff first of all i'll play it for you and then we'll uh, we'll break it down a bit <laughs> So the riff for I'm the One is based predominantly around the A minor pentatonic and the A blue scale. And as I said, it features a fast up-tempo shuffle, which is possibly the most demanding thing about this, uh, this riff. It's basically an open A. You're pedaling off an open A and you're playing A on the seventh fret of the D, a G on the fifth fret D, and back to the A on the seventh fret of the D. But you're going, as I said, pedaling off of the open A strings. You get this. <laughs> Then we have uh, this little uh, chord, two note chord dyad on the fifth fret of the D and the G. This is implying an A minor seventh, so you get a. And then we play the riff again, but at the end of the cycle, we play the third fret of the A, so. We go around the riff one more time. Final time, we have this interesting open string pull-off pattern, uh, which I'll play for you slowly. And that's a real signature lick of Van Halen. You hear a lick similar to that in Eruption. Uh, what, he, what you're doing here is you're starting off by pulling the fifth fret of the G to an open G. Play seven on the D, and then we're pulling off five on the B to open B. 7, 5, open G, and then 7 on the D. And then we repeat that same pattern on the G, D, and A string. And then to finish off, just a 7, 5, and open on the D string. So you put that together with the riff. such an incredibly uh, unorthodox pattern or lick and it's just really angular and it's just I think it's just Eddie going for it I don't think there's any uh, kind of theoretical thought process behind it it's just a great lick okay we go around the riff one more time so I'll uh, play it for you slow <laughs> time the riff concludes with some natural harmonics we're playing across the 12th fret a d and g the seventh fret a d and g and the fifth fret of the g string and then we've got a couple of little whammy bar dips onto the next section here we've got a little theme that's based around the a blue scale <laughs> Thank you. 
I really like that part of the riff there, where he plays that uh, minor third, which is C, to a major third, which is C sharp, and then resolves to the A note on the second fret G. It's a real kind of old school Chuck Berry uh, or Eric Clapton sort of blues trick where you go from the minor to the major. Play that again. <laughs> And we have this little descending pentatonic blue scale lick, all played with pinched harmonics, and there's chromatic uh, fill-in passing notes as well. <laughs> then we're back round the riff again. <laughs> Okay, and then to conclude this uh, this riff, this intro riff, we kick in the phase 90. I'm using an EVH phase 90, and uh, we play this little uh, symmetrical pattern. It's just a semitone and a whole tone, and we play it from the A string right the way across to the B string. And we repeat on the G. And then on the top, we just change the order of the notes. We play a 60. 16, 19, and 17. So the whole pattern is 16, 17, 19. Thanks, Jamie. That track, I'm the One, was recorded at Sunset Sound Recorders in Studio One. What is remarkable about this whole album, with the exception of maybe one or two rhythm overdubs, it's all just one take all the way through. So most of the album is just single guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. If you listen to the electric guitar, you'll hear Eddie has his guitar for the whole song panned over to the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side is the chamber. And this is the chamber just off to the side of the control room. This whole song is guitar in one speaker, chamber in the other. That is it. That is the sound of this song. So if we listen to the drums for a second, because the band are performing all live in the room at once, you can hear in the overheads, for instance, you can hear the full band play. This album was just recorded in a couple of weeks. The whole thing, recorded and mixed in a couple of weeks. And it was started on August the 30th, 1977. Finished a couple of weeks into September. The first single came out on January the 28th, 1978. And that was their version of You Really Got Me. It's just remarkable how exciting this was when you first heard it. I mean, what an away to announce some music. Just this incredible, tight band just slamming it out. With the release of Van Halen's self-titled album, every guitar playing kid instantly had a new hero. What Eddie Van Halen was doing was so new, so innovative, everyone wanted to play like him. He was the Mozart of guitar, but Eddie's innovative and virtuistic approach to guitar wasn't the only unique thing about him as a guitarist. Eddie Van Halen has had a number of guitars over the years, but none as famous as his Frankenstrat. When Eddie couldn't find the guitar that he wanted to play, he decided to build his own. But rather than research how to build the guitar, he just started putting it together out of scrap parts. This guitar, named the Frankenstrat, is a combination of a Charvel Strat style body, Gibson Path humbucker pickups, and various Fender parts. He even did the frets and the paint job himself. I didn't have the money, and the guitar that I wanted to play did not exist. It was that simple. Right. Yeah. It was actually Boogie Bodies who supplied Charvel with the body and the neck. And I go out there, oh, never forget, there's, there's a body laying at the bottom. I'm going, what are these? And I go, oh, those are seconds. And I didn't know what that meant. Cosmetically, they were not attractive. And I'm going, well, I'll take one of those. The body cost me 50 bucks. And then that cost me 80. A lot of what I do is is really trial and error. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I do know what where I want to get. I love chasing tone. 
Eddie not only experimented with his guitar, but with his amps as well. On the first six Van Halen albums, Eddie used his custom modded Marshall 1959 Super Lead. Legend goes he bought the amp second hand from England, but didn't understand how the voltage switch on the back worked and couldn't get it to sound like he wanted. To get the sound he wanted, he bought a Variac transformer. This allowed him to drive the amp much, much harder. He could turn all the knobs up to 10 and control the volume from the Variac, getting the kind of distortion and overdrive that he wanted to hear. He really knew the guitar sound that he wanted. If I was the only one back then that would just take everything on the amp and turn full, full blast up. I remember when we played clubs, because, you know, I had that approach to my playing since about 74, you know, uh, with the old amps I used to use. I'd turn them all the way up. People would tell me, you can't use them like that. I go, really? Watch this. You know, there are little tricks that I did to keep it from blowing, but, uh, you know, all kinds of guitars used to come and snoop around and see what the hell I was doing. But it was pretty basic, really. It was just turned all the way out. Rather than stay in the box of guitar tones that were available to him, Eddie Van Halen kept pushing and kept innovating, constantly chasing the tone he wanted and settling for nothing less. In fact, he holds three separate US patents for various guitar inventions. Yes, Eddie made his own guitar. Yes, he modded a Marshall amp to get a different sound. And yes, he constantly experimented in the pursuit of tone. But most of the magic, of course, of Eddie Van Halen's tone lives in his fingers. Van Halen, it was their first tour, I think it was 78, putting up for my tour, and I'm listening, I'm going, God damn, what, what kind of instrument and amp is that son of a bitch using? So I went out to watch those guys, and they stopped right away and went, Dad Nugent, they wanted to come over and they wanted to talk about the tour and the music, and uh, there I said, well, here, plug this son of a bitch in, we'll keep it in my Fender amps. So he positioned himself, and he started whipping out those mystical licks where he's done the double tap, the double hand thing. And it sounded just like him out of my rig. And I grabbed his Strat, his mutilated bastardized Strat, through that outrageous gonzo homemade rig of his, and I started playing Dog Eat Dog or Cat Scratch or something, and it sounded just like me. It's not just his technique and his tone that has made Van Halen one of the best-selling bands of all time. It's also because he's an incredible songwriter. Incredible tone and face-melting guitar solos are one thing, but in order to take over the world like Van Halen did, you need another key ingredient. Incredible songs to tie it all together. And Van Halen certainly knows how to write songs. Their debut album is written entirely by Eddie, his brother drummer Alex Van Halen, singer of David Lee Roth, and because Eddie is not just a guitarist but also a writer, Van Halen songs have his revolutionary guitar playing baked into them. Eddie's style is all his own innovation. His gear is all custom made by him and Van Halen songs are the vehicle that deliver this incredible combination. Eddie Van Halen is so musically powerful and Van Halen songs are so perfectly tailored to his playing. But in 1983, Eddie took his skills to another artist, the King of Pop. Eddie had made a deal with his bandmates that they would never do any side gigs or solo projects. But while they were out of town, producer Quincy Jones called him and asked him if he would play a solo on the new Michael Jackson record. After getting set up at the studio, Quincy told Eddie he could do whatever he wanted with the song Beat It. As Eddie recalls, I listen to the song and I immediately go, can I change some parts? I turn to the engineer and I go, okay, from the breakdown, chop in this part, go to this place, pre-chorus to the chorus out. It took him maybe 10 minutes to put it together and I proceeded to improvise two solos over it. When Michael heard what Eddie did, he thanked him for having the passion to not only play the solo, but to actually care about the song. Because of Eddie's songwriting ability, he was able to rework a Michael Jackson song, making it even better. Now let's throw it back to Jamie to break down Eddie's incredible solo on Beat It. This solo features some fantastic licks and some of them are, are quite hard to reproduce exact. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do my best. Anyway, I'm going to play through it first of all and then we'll uh, we'll divide it up into little sections. Here we go. <laughs>
We start the solo off by dipping the bar and bending up the second fret of the G. We slide up to the seventh fret of the G and then we tap over the 14th fret of the G sounding a, uh, a tapped harmonic and then sliding up to the ninth fret and sound the harmonic again. So slowly that sounds something like this. <laughs> Then we have this little tapping phrase in E minor. I'll play it for you slowly. We're using frets 10, 12, 14 uh, with our uh, fretting hand and then tapping on the 15th fret. So you start off with a tap. We then slide up to the 12th fret B and hammer onto that flat sixth of E, which is, which is a C natural. Okay, for the next lick, this is the controversial lick. This is a wide stretch pattern and I've seen many different versions of this. I must confess, when I'm playing this uh, section quickly, it kind of takes on a life of its own. I think it's quite hard to actually reproduce that exact moment. And I also question one of the phrases whether Eddie actually meant to hit another note. You're stretching from the 12th to the 15th, to the 19th on the B and the E string. And so you get this phrase, this is a fantastic phrase. <laughs> So there, I, I always think that that uh, that section where you're uh, you're playing 12 and 15 on the B and then 12 on the top E. When I play that, I must admit my my hand is naturally rolling and I'm hitting that uh, that 19th fret. But uh, on the on the record, it appears that he's going. I think just as long as you're in that ballpark when you play it, it sounds cool. But that that's what's going on on the record. We then have a little uh, a little blues lick, and then we tap on the fifteenth fret B and we slide away, hammer on and pull off. Uh, then we uh, bending lick there on the G string, pull off to an open G and drop the bar. And then we drop down to the ninth fret G and we do another bend with a pinched harmonic. <laughs> and more dips of the bar. Uh, then we have a uh, little Yan Hammer sort of keyboard inspired lick. Imagine the, the pitch wheel of the keyboard. You're, uh, you're dipping into the bar on the, uh, the fifth fret of the B and pulling off to the third fret and then to the open B. <laughs> And then you bend up that second fret G and hit that uh, pinched harmonic. Then we have some blues licks up at the 12th position of the E minor pentatonic. <laughs> this next lick's quite interesting. It outlines the chords of C and D. Starts tapping on the 15th fret B, pulls off to the 8th and hammers on the 13th. And then I swap over here to my first and third finger to accommodate the, uh, the new position. So that's... Um, Tapping 15, pull off 8, and hammer 12 on both the E and the B. And then we slide up to the 10th fret, which is the D note, which is obviously highlighting the D chord, and we're tapping on the, uh, the 17th fret, which is the A note, which is the 5th. We slide away, play two open strings that get us in position for the next phrase. This next phrase, again, another real classic Eddie lick. I tried to adopt a bit of Eddie's playing style with the picking hand. If my picking hand looks a bit strange, then Eddie does this thing where he holds the pick with his thumb and second finger. I just can't get on with holding the pick in that way. I always drop it, but he arches his wrist and he flicks his wrist and you, you do a unison bend. <laughs> From the 12, 14, 15, 17, 19, 22, and bends up, but all the while keeping that uh, tremolo picking. Beats It is from Michael Jackson's album Thriller, the second best selling album of all time. With this track, Eddie proved that his musical genius works outside of Van Halen. But Eddie also proved that as elements within his own band changed, he could still not be stopped. In 84, Van Halen released their sixth studio album, also titled 1984. This album was a clear evolution for the band, incorporating the new hot instrument of the day, the synthesizer. 
When Eddie was a child, he had studied classical piano, and those lessons were about to pay off in a big way. The album features all the things people love about Van Halen, Eddie's powerful, incredible guitar playing, David Lee Roth's powerful vocals, the great songwriting, but they also adapted with the sound of the mid 80s and mixed in Eddie on synth. The hit song Jump was their first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100, but most of the song was keyboard driven. However, when it comes to the guitar work, Eddie makes it very clear that he's still Eddie Van Halen. So let's throw it back to Jamie to break the solo down of this incredible song. I'm gonna play through the solo for you first of all. <laughs> So now let's take a look at the uh, licks and sections from Jump, and uh, this kicks off with a blues lick based around the B-flat minor pentatonic. Got my guitar back to standard tuning now, so uh, I love the way that he references his love for blues guitarists, especially Eric Clapton with this lick. <laughs> It's got one of those hammer on from nowhere that um, hammers onto that uh, onto that flat five on the ninth fret of the G, and then jumps across to the root note on the sixth fret of the top E. The next phrase is some pinched harmonic bends and pre bends. So he's pulling that string down. And then another blues lick. So we're changing position there with the pentatonic. Now we're on to the first falling down the stairs and landing on your feet lick. This is the uh, two-handed tapping lick. This is quite a, a tricky lick. Features uh, three note per string on the uh, top E string to start with, with the left hand. And then as we move down into a two note pattern across the uh, remaining strings to the A string, when we get to the G string, we change the fingering. So instead of being a uh, tone and a half, we then swap to two whole tones. So I'll play it for you nice and slowly so you can see what's going on. You've got to get that string bend on that final note. So let's play the lick one more time. It's quite tricky, that one, to pull down. Here's the next phrase, more blues licks. I love this next phrase where Eddie outlines the B-flat minor chord with a rake across the, uh, the arpeggio. And instead of playing the usual kind of minor pentatonic shape there, he just uh, opts to go from the root to the second before jumping up to that E flat note. So onto that final lick now, which is one of Eddie's uh, falling down the stairs licks again. And this is a great example of his shape playing where he's just playing one shape across the neck and he has one note in mind, which is that final target note that uh, really underpins the change back to the C chord. <laughs> And the lick sort of starts off faster and then slows down a bit as he uh, as he reaches the climax of the run. But uh, it's just a uh, a half tone and a whole tone uh, pattern that he plays from the 15th, 16th, and 18th fret of the A string and just repeats it. <laughs> And then there's a little uh, 15, 16, 15 uh, hammer on on the uh, on the top E string to uh, conclude the solo. The album 1984 peaked at number two on the Billboard charts. Which album was number one? Yes, you guessed it. Michael Jackson's Thriller, which featured Eddie on Beat It. Eddie Van Halen is such a powerful musical force. It doesn't matter if he's blowing people away with Eruption, a featured solo with the King of Pop, or adding synthesizers into the mix. When David Lee Roth left the band in 85, Van Halen added vocalist Sammy Hagar and continued to grow and dominate the world of music. Their 1986 album, 5150, surpassed their previous album peaking at number one on Billboard. 
As a matter of fact, the next three albums after that all hit number one as well. In 2007, Van Halen was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Van Halen has sold over 80 million records worldwide and had 13 number one hits on the Billboard. Eddie Van Halen has influenced not only other guitarists, but changed the landscape of guitar playing forever, pushing the limits of what can be done with a guitar. But for Eddie, it's never about being rich and famous. It's always been about the love of the instrument. In his own words, I know a lot of people who really want to be famous or whatever, but they don't really practice the guitar. They think all you do is grow your hair long and look freaky and jump around, and they neglect the musical end. It is tough to learn music. It's like having to go to school to be a lawyer, but you have to enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, forget it. Eddie Van Halen truly loves the guitar. That's all it's ever been about. But for this reason, he kept practicing, kept pushing, kept experimenting, kept writing, kept growing, and ultimately changed music along the way. Thank you ever so much. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Of course, please check out the other videos in the series. And of course, a special thanks to Mr. Jamie Humphreys. There's a link to his channel below. Have a marvelous time. We'll see you all again very soon.